After months of hard work, we finally sailed Flying Coney back to Lelystad. It was a calm day and a really nice trip. For us, it was the perfect treat after a very exhausting shipyard's time. Built as a warship, fished the stormy North Sea, converted into a beautiful sailing ship, unfortunately converted once more into a motor sailor and finally rescued by us. We are now dedicated to bring the ship back to life. We have to restore the hull, build an entirely new interior and eventually convert her back into a sailing ship. And then we can finally sail the ocean together with you. So welcome aboard Flying Coney. Hello, it's so good to see you again. I'm Barbara and together with Daniel I restore the historic steel ship Flying Coney. However, this video is about the fun part of owning a ship. We sail Flying Coney back to Lelystad together with our boat neighbor Eric and one of our patrons, Hermann. So if you ever wondered if it's possible to sail aboard Flying Coney, yes, it is. It is one of the benefits you get as a patron. Whenever we have the possibility, we will ask you to join us. So this time we bring Flying Coney from Urk to Lelystad. That means going from the Eiselmeer to the Markermeer through the Hutripsluis. It is a short 11 nautical mile journey and it's one of those cold December days. The nights are long, the days are short, but fortunately the sea is calm and there is almost no wind. But before we start our journey, let's welcome all our new supporters on Patreon, Paypal and Super Thanks. And an extra big thanks goes to all our officers, who really go above and beyond to bring Flying Coney back to life. And now, let's untie the lines. So we used an aft spring to get the bow off the dock. That is necessary because we don't have a bow thruster. I put the engine in reverse and Flying Coney gently turns around the aft spring. Then Barbara collects the spring. Jumps aboard and removes the stern line. In the meantime, I bring the rudder hard to port and with short bursts forward and aft, I slowly align the ship with the very narrow channel. When going forward, the rudder pushes the stern to starboard. And when going backwards, the strong prop bog also pushes the stern to starboard. That way you can basically turn all the 25 meters on a dime. The only thing you have to be careful about is that the wheelhouse is right at the center of the boat. And it's a bit tricky to sense the turning motion. Finally, I got Flying Coney aligned with the channel and had no turning motion left at all. So I gave it a shot and slowly pushed forward. Please 
much starboard. After all that practicing, even more fun awaited us at the end of the very narrow channel, where we needed to turn the ship in the harbor basin. So you know the story. Rather hard to port, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, pointing in the right direction and off we go. After we've mastered the first half mile, which was also the most difficult one, we could finally relax and enjoy our one and a half hour trip back to our harbor, with no wind and a calm sea. For all those who are interested in how much fuel Flying Coney consumes, it's about 10 liters per hour at 5.5 knots. And for a ship her size, that's very reasonable. It will take a few minutes until she actually goes in the direction. <laughs> So the next challenge is the Hutrips Lewis. This log separates the Markermeer from the Eiselmeer, and therefore it has not much rise. However, it is a very busy log, because all the commercial ships use this route. So we were very glad that we had two Dutchmen aboard, who could overtake the communication with the log keeper and understood the Dutch radio calls much better than we did. What I learned during the time at the shipyard is to approach maneuvers in the most relaxed way possible. Take your time and go only as fast as necessary and as slow as possible. Especially when you have a new crew and it's your first boat with an engine. 
that gives everybody aboard enough time to react and adjust according to the situations. It's much easier to sort things out when you're going slow and safe. For example, if the line handling isn't working the way it was planned and the bow is slowly drifting away from the dock. But as you see, no problem at all. Barbara just jumps ashore and takes the line. I then have to wait until the line is made fast and with the aft line attached, I swing Flying Coney's bow back by simply putting the engine into gear. After we mastered the lock, we were almost back in our home port. So let's see if the docking goes according to plan. Of course not. You see, the problem with a seagoing ship in the marker mare is that there is always not much water underneath your keel. Which makes maneuvering interesting, to say the least. So in this case the wind is coming from starboard, as you can see on the flags. Therefore the plan was to bring Flying Coney alongside the other boat about one meter away from the dolphins and let the wind do the rest of the work. However, the mud said nope. So I needed a second approach to bring Flying Coney into her spot. This time we made the foreline fast and used quite a lot of power backwards to swing the stern through the mud. And eventually we got there. After months of hard work, Flying Coney is finally back in the harbor. And that feels really good. Next time we will give you a complete boat tour to show you everything that has changed since we bought Flying Coney. But that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.